All right. Um, welcome, everyone. Thanks for uh, coming to my session. My name is Ildiko Vancha. I just recently joined the OpenStack Foundation. My role is Ecosystem Technical Lead. And as part of this job role, uh, one of my responsibilities is to uh, trying to keep the ecosystem uh, healthy because if you just look at these numbers, our community is quite large. So even regarding people, we have many countries involved, so we have many cultures. It is a great mixture um, of people, uh, mindsets and uh, ways of thinking. We have many, many companies around and well, the code base is just growing and growing and growing. So how to deal with all these numbers? Because these are nice and large and we, are, we like to keep them growing. Uh, as much as we can, or at, or well, keeping them stable or keep them growing, uh, but how to how to operate in an environment which is kind of this dynamic, and uh, at, at this size. So uh, as OpenStack itself uh, is kind of a software package, an open source cloud platform, uh, we can look at it from, from multiple perspectives. One of this is uh, the business view. So if we have in the room um, people who are taking care of a company's business, then uh, you might be interested in the user surveys that we are uh, continuously running because from business perspective, it is really important to have the, the latest data to, to know how the market looks like, uh, how the adoption of, of our um, platform uh, is going. It is really important for for us as, as the foundation and as, as the community to know that how successful the software package that we are developing. Um, and on the other hand, for those companies who are uh, using it and building their business on top of it, uh, it is also a very important information for them. So as you can see on the slide, we are reaching out to more than um, 2,500 users in the time frame of one year. But I still need to remind you that um, this, this is not a comprehensive market study. So um, the, the user surveys are similarly kind of going on um, community, uh, with a community mindset. So they are with voluntary basis. Therefore, uh, when you find information regarding uh, which projects are uh, mostly used and uh, which uh, new and upcoming projects people are interested at, um, those, are, those are good numbers, but, but you need to know that those numbers are, uh, uh, should not drive your uh, business and or technical decisions. And um, on the other hand, OpenStack itself is not just the software package, but all those more, more than 60,000 people who are working on it. So it is very important that uh, we are all, all aware of um, that how the community operates and how we as individuals within the community uh, are operating. Um, so when, when you're joining us and uh, start to participate, uh, then you start to recognize um, that it is a little bit chaotic and uh, also there are so many moving parts that those ways how you might use to track uh, that how efficient uh, you are or you were with your work and uh, those deadlines that you, that you set up as, as targets and and uh, how you collaborated with, with your team uh, within your own company. Uh, those things are just almost uh, the same, but, but not, not anymore because of all these moving parts and we are, we are having people coming in and, and leaving. So it's really not a stable environment. Therefore, we cannot uh, handle it from metrics perspective either. Uh, and one very important thing um, right at the beginning. All the numbers that you can find as uh, publicly available data, uh, these numbers are not for, uh, you know, just increasing them and, and kind of playing um, 
uh, metrics game game with them. So it, it's really more for your information and and for um, for you to be able to improve and also to help the community to to improve by uh, being a good community citizen. So what what you can find and and what what we provide is really just a basic set of metrics. So. Um, we as the foundation or the community itself, we are not really combining uh, any, of, any of the data that is available. Um, we, are, we are trying to give you a package from which you can build your own system uh, by which you can track yourself uh, or, or how the community is doing. And on the other hand, I would like to also uh, draw attention to the fact that no matter how simple the metrics are and how simple and straightforward the definition of a metric is, it still depends on that who looks at that number and who tries to interpret it and what they are trying to use it for. Because it will, it will not mean the same thing when it is used in a different context. And also uh, what, we, what we feel important is that uh, the data that, that we have is, uh, that can be collected automatically. So what you see online, it is usually really the latest and greatest uh, values. And uh, as I see, uh, still not a that good mixture of uh, women and men, men in this room. Um, it is, it is a quite new activity. Uh, this is the first diagram that personally myself I saw this morning. The Women of OpenStack group uh, in, a, in a collaboration with Viturja, they started a diversity um, program with, with collecting metrics and kind of trying to check the tendency in this area and see how we are performing to, to deal with uh, different types of diversity like gender diversity. So as you can see on the figure, we are, we are doing better. Um, so I was hoping to see uh, more women in the room. Um, but if, if you, you or your company are, are interested uh, in this number or, or participating in, in the activity, please reach out uh, either to me or, or to the Women of OpenStack group or just, uh, or just follow these, these activities because the data is really interesting and uh, it still shows that uh, we are on, on, on track and on, on the journey, but we still have kind of homework to do and uh, we have room to improve further. Um, so what tools we are, uh, we are having that offers you data? Uh, we have basically two um, publicly available. One is Stackalytics. I would guess that many of you at least heard about it already or maybe using it already. And the other one is uh, a Viturja-based uh, activity dashboard. Uh, you, on both of these, you can find different uh, metrics. Uh, I try to just uh, rather um, paste screenshots here uh, to, to give you an idea that basically what we have, you can see that the community view is really more about the numbers of, of collaboration and contribution. So in this sense, we have, for example, commits, we have, we have emails, we have lines of code, which personally I totally hate. Uh, we have reviews. And in the other tool, you can see that we, we try to follow then how the tracking systems um, are used and operating and uh, how the IRC, which is the text-based uh, communication channel for us, uh, how busy that is and um, how much people are um, active and responsive uh, on that media. So um, when you when you look into into these uh, these metrics, I I thought to try to talk a little bit more about those which are more commonly used, and uh, which are sometimes also misused. Um, personally, I have experience from the past uh, when 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 people kind of uh, thought that. 
if, if a number is, is growing rapidly, that's just good and that will keep their managers happy or the manager thought that, that it will just keep him or her happy if, if the team uh, operates like this. But it's not really only, uh, not, not really true. Um, I think in most cases it's, it's not true, especially if you're really just looking to one uh, simple number. So for example, uh, if you just type into um, the browser that uh, stackalytics.com, then the, the first metric that, that you will see is uh, the code reviews. Uh, because um, all the all the code changes are, are reviewed by by the project teams, and uh, it is kind of a, a very important number from the from the sense of to see that that how much the the code is double triple uh, checked before before it gets part of uh, of the software package that we are offering, and um, it is also something that for example developers are rather do always tomorrow or maybe next week or start next month or if their managers as them for. So here I would like to draw attention to this one uh, because it is really important to do um, valuable reviews and, and don't be afraid of numbers like, like growing uh, the number of minus ones, which means that I think you should work more on this code. Uh, because those are the most valuable uh, reviews in most cases. And um, just kind of blindly uh, giving plus ones, which means that you, you, agree, with, you agree with the code change. Uh, you don't have the power to, to merge it, but, but you think it's good. Uh, without any comments, it's just not that beneficial uh, for the project teams, for the community, for the, the quality of, of the code base. So for example, when you as a developer or if you're a manager uh, of whom the, the team starts to, to work upstream and work, work in open source, it is really important to, to avoid, let's say, practices like uh, what if we plus one patch 10 or 20 patches every single day? So I, I saw earlier, uh, like, I don't know, having 400 reviews in, in 10 days or something like that. So you, you can see that, um, that something is really wrong there. And uh, the unfortunate thing with, with these uh, cases is that in, um, in many times it's not really about just to, to, to grow the number, but they are kind of uh, doing it by mistake. And they, they don't really think about that, that what, what this really means. And uh, on the other hand, when, when you look at it from community perspective, it really has a kind of um, bad interpretation because uh, you can be considered as a, as a rather bad than any kind of a good community citizen. And uh, this is something that you would really, really like to avoid. So uh, code reviews are the, the things that, that you need to do in a, in a clever basis. So for example, when you as a developer look at your numbers, because sometimes you're just checking that, that how you're um, operating and progressing within the community, if you see that those numbers are too high, um, then you might think about that, that, that the review and the other activity balances um, maybe not okay, if, especially if you grew the number too quickly and you, and you gave too many minus ones. That, that usually means that you need to check back on, on all those things later so you, you can easily overload yourself. So these numbers can, can be used in a way of finding the balance in your, in your own work and uh, find, find a good way to, to do the everyday tasks when you're, when you're trying to be part of a, of a develop, developer team or, or if you're already part of it. Um, we have lovely numbers like commits and, and lines of code and um, these are kind of favorite ones and I think it's kind of usually handled as a competition. 
um, at least people many times look at it like who has the most comets, uh, who, who has the, the most uh, number of lines changed in the code. Um, to, to clarify the two words, if any of you wouldn't know, commits means um, a chunk of code that, or, or documentation change that, that got merged and got part of the software package that we are offering. Lines of code means uh, the number of lines of code or documentation that got changed. And uh, especially when we are trying to rationalizing things, this can be a high number, either or. Uh, either uh, the changes uh, consist of many commits, and each commit has a smaller lines of code, or or maybe a few larger changes. Um, regarding these things, uh, what you would usually uh, use these things for. For example, when when you're trying to make sure that that uh, your strategy is followed by by the activities. So uh, when, for example, you're working for a company and and there's a product that that you're developing, then you know that which projects you need, and most probably. Uh, those are the projects where you would like to see more and more uh, commits uh, and or lines of code uh, in these metrics. Uh, because if you just um, focus on being part of the community by um, kind of um, growing the numbers overall without checking where, where you're active and where you're not active, uh, this usually means that you get distracted and, and the efforts that you're, you're putting in uh, the um, community uh, contribution and collaboration might be a kind of a wasted effort because uh, one important thing about open source and how we are working together is that uh, it is really important that, that you, you have influence within that team and, and project where, uh, where, you have, uh, where you have business or where you have uh, interest um, either, either personally. Uh, because there's really no other way to um, kind of influence the direction where, where the projects and the code's uh, life is going. So the only way is to, to be active uh, at those places. Uh, which is really important for you and your business, um, as opposed to just randomly trying to generate a um, large number of changes here and there. It is also also personal experience that, that sometimes people just, just misinterpret this, this whole thing and trying to use it as kind of more a marketing opportunity rather than something really strategical work. Uh, we have one uh, interesting metric. Uh, I, I think I figured it out what it really means a year ago, and I'm, I'm in, in OpenStack for more than three years now. Uh, the person day effort number actually means uh, it counts the days when you had any sort of upstream activity. So for example, you, you sent out a mail, you uploaded a new patch set for review, um, or you, you, you made a code review. Um, this can be uh, really useful for you just to check that how much time and how much effort uh, you put into the uh, upstream and open source work. Um, I don't really think, again, that just using this one number, it will be uh, that much meaning for you, but, but using it as kind of um, part of a group of, of numbers, uh, it can be a really good indicator just to um, compare the effort that you put into the job and, and the outcome that you have by the end of the day. Beyond this, we, we are also tracking um, other things like, like blueprints and uh, bug reports. Um, these, are, these are more the values of, of how busy a project is and, and uh, how the maintenance work 
of the project is is uh, going. Uh, usually, I would say uh, you as an individual, I don't really think that you will use it much. But uh, from from the project uh, perspective, where where you are working in, um, this is kind of uh, again an interesting and and uh, somewhat important uh, set of numbers. Maybe you, if you, if you try to use it uh, just to track your own work, it can be an interesting number that was the ratio between your um, submitted blueprints and, and the implemented blueprints. Uh, because if, if the numbers are, uh, let's say, you're submitting many, many blueprints and uh, none of them gets to the implemented stage, then uh, this is this is a feedback uh, that you 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 don't do something uh, good uh, in a good way, and this this can be for for multiple reasons, um, but most probably uh, the the root cause of of, of the reasons uh, are um, the communication, because uh, one of one of the things that that are really really important in a community uh, like OpenStack is is communicating. Uh, that what you would like to do, how you would like to solve your problems, and um, and if someone uh, has a comment on on your idea or on your code change, then how you agree on the best solution uh, with which you can move forward. So if you're not really successful with with uh, bringing the new feature ideas through. Uh, you might revisit and rethink the way how you're um, describing your ideas, how you're trying to discuss your ideas with, with other people uh, within each project, and um, how you're handling the, the whole process from uh, introducing the idea until it gets implemented and fully functional. Um, regarding the tools, um, one of the, I think, most useful um, thing is that in Stack Analytics you, you can find uh, a people view or, well, person view. Um, so you can, you can find the activity reports uh, for each and every individual who contributes to the code base of OpenStack. And, um, Many times uh, the question comes up that, okay, I, I got stuck with something and uh, I don't really know the solution. I tried to reach out to people on IRC, but I wasn't really successful. I also have problems with, with the time zones uh, because the people are from all around the globe, so um, it's really hard to, um, to ensure that, that when you're awake and active, uh, you will find many people around. But actually, uh, in this um, activity view, uh, you can find uh, a diagram with these smaller and larger dots, uh, which is the UTC hour uh, of when the person is, is active. So this is mine. Uh, based on this, uh, as a homework, you can, you can figure out that what time zone I might be in. Um, although maybe it's a little bit misleading because I mostly stay up late at night as opposed to get up early in the morning. So uh, maybe you will not be able to locate the, the exact time zone, but, but you will be really close. And also, if, um, if you're interested in, in, in the project and the area that, that I'm working on um, and you find overlapping with your active hours and mine, uh, you can even reach out to me on IRC directly because uh, you will have a better chance to, to get response. So for example, if you're, if you're struggling with this, um, you, can, you can use this uh, graph to, to find this data, which is really, really useful because many people are struggling with uh, how to do the communication um, effectively and how to deal with, with the time zone difference, which is really, really inconvenient. Uh, beyond this, you can also find uh, all the numbers uh, that a person uh, produced and also some information like Launchpad ID and uh, uh, GitHub and Gerrit ID and also that which projects the person uh, participates as a, as a core, core reviewer or core developer. 
Um, these are also uh, important information if you would like to reach out to the person and also to identify that, that on what the person is working on. So you, you find a common, common ground for uh, your discussions. Uh, the other tool uh, that we have and I mentioned is, uh, is the one which is based on Biturgia, um, which is uh, the activity.openstack.org. Um, I think it is kind of more of a lonely site because uh, most of the people, at least who I know, are using Stackalytics. Um, this one is more, uh, more about an overview-like Thing as opposed to going to details like uh, providing per project metrics. So you can see the overall uh, activities regarding comets, uh, for example. You can also find um, the data which is uh, for companies, uh, but you will not find that, that which OpenStack project uh, uh, produced uh, the different chunks of the data. And uh, you can also find information here, for example, about IRC, which we don't have on Stackalytics, or at least not yet. Uh, and it can be also kind of um, an interesting and, um, and important uh, metric in the sense of you will see that, that, that who are the people who are kind of our people, persons, uh, who will more likely um, answer you or, or, or will be available on IRC. I would not recommend still to, to start uh, ping the, the person on the very top of the list, um, but at least you have an idea that, that if, you, uh, if you need information, then, then who might, might be uh, your friend and who, who might help you uh, with the process. Okay, so um, as I, as I uh, mentioned in the beginning, it's really important uh, that what mindset you're looking uh, the numbers at because it will have a totally different meaning for you. Um, for example, um, when, you're, when you're more uh, in the man management, management layer and you're more interested in, in the business view uh, and, and product strategy view uh, of the development process, um, then you will be interested in, in both seeing some numbers uh, growing as a tendency and uh, or well, being stable and or, and or growing. And on the other hand, uh, you also need to ensure that all the effort uh, that uh, your team is putting into the open source and upstream work is focused, uh, focused on all those areas which are uh, important for your product strategy. And um, it does not necessarily have to be just all those projects that you are using today, but um, if you're planning to, to bring some, some more projects into, into your production environment or into your product, uh, you might start to, let's say, invest into those areas and, uh, and build, uh, build a team and um, uh, have influence uh, within, those, within those projects, uh, which you will need in the future, because then by the time you will actually get there uh, that you need, you need bugs fixed, you need, you need to introduce new features, you will already have the, the stable ground uh, under your feet and uh, you can kind of ensure uh, way better that, that you can keep your timelines and uh, you will be successful with all the um, contributions and, uh, and product plans that you have. And um, I think it's kind of uh, true for, for multiple aspects that it's usually better to, to try to put together uh, a metrics package and kind of combining all these numbers uh, that you find available uh, as opposed to looking, looking at them as, as single values because um, um, 
if you just want to see a, a very high level view on, on um, whether something is moving or not, then you can use one number. But if you would like to also ensure that, that the process that you, you're having internally and, and uh, the ways of working that you're trying to follow with, with, with the community where you're working, um, then you, you need to, you need to uh, kind of compare that, that how much effort went into the work uh, and, and how much uh, outcome you have and uh, how successful and, and how productive the team is. Uh, when, when you're an individual, um, personally myself, I was way more interested in these numbers uh, when I was a newcomer and uh, when I started my journey with OpenStack because um, it was a really good way just, just to see that, that how uh, I am as an individual uh, succeeding or not succeeding in the community, even if I was contributing on behalf of a company. So it can even be a kind of a self-motivation thing when, when you see that, that, that you have commits merged, uh, you have your reviews ongoing, uh, and you, you start to see all the positive uh, aspects uh, of your community involvement. And uh, here, what, what, you, what you usually try to really focus more on is that how you're doing all, all your things are uh, efficient enough. So, uh, for example, you can, you can track your, your person day effort uh, along with your reviews, uh, the commits and the commits that you, you had and uh, kind of uh, seeing the combination of these things as an overall number uh, that you would like to kind of uh, stabilize and or grow. Um, and you can see by this way um, that actually the work, uh, what you're having, has a, has a certain outcome uh, kind of in the time frame how, how you plan to get all your work done. And basically this was the information I wanted to share with you and we have quite some time for questions that I'm happy to answer if you have any. Yep. Can you come up to the mic just so that because we are recording, so. Uh. Hello. Hello. Uh, can this matrix be used for improving the code quality and 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 improving the education of the newcomers of the community? Um, regarding code quality, I would say that that if if the review numbers. Uh, in the balance of minus ones and plus ones uh, is kind of compared to the project size uh, is a good good set of numbers and um, and it's it's not uh, going down but but more up uh, that's something that means that that people are um, kind of actively reviewing the code and I think it's more more from from um, for you as an individual uh, who, who tries to participate and, and, and who, who try to ensure that, that where you're working will be stable and something that it's easy to maintain, uh, the review number is, is, is the one that, that you, can, you can concentrate on. Um, beyond this, I think we, we do not track too many things uh, which would explicitly tell you things about the code quality. Although I know about activities uh, where um, we have data, for example, from universities and they are working on uh, code quality improvements uh, based on uh, that data. Uh, I think in most cases they, they also uh, make the data public so it's available. Um, but so far we as a community we do not really uh, track those. Uh, and by data I mean for example uh, code complexity or code duplication and, and these sort of things. We don't have these available uh, as a community but we have uh, teams and people around the community who are trying to keep an eye on this aspect as well. And uh, I, I can really just encourage you that, that if you're interested in, in these areas uh, and or if, 
if it is something that you're already doing, um, then please join and, and provide us uh, information because it is, it is really important from, from maintainability uh, and efficient uh, code development point of view to, to address these aspects as well. Regarding newcomers, um, I would say that um, we are offering trainings and we are more uh, trying to, to teach them how to use these numbers uh, better and, uh, and try not to, to mislead, uh, misread them. Um, this is, this is what, what we have mostly in connection with, with, with onboarding new people and, uh, and using these numbers. Any further questions? Yes? Hi, uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, just to mention for the, for the audience, we are part of the activity board, but uh, we haven't had a proper support for the last year and something. Mm -hmm. As we finished, let's say, the uh, specific relation with the foundation with that product. So mm -hmm. that's maybe the reason because there might be, you may miss some information there. Uh, said all of this. Uh, mm -hmm. The question is um, my personal perception, having a specific uh, metrics like, uh, you know, the, having top people contributing in terms of commits and so on, it's gamification. But once you have a metric, uh, people may try to cheat on that metric. So instead of having uh, individuals metrics, that maybe is as you say, uh, you should try to improve by yourself having your metrics, but uh, maybe in, from the foundation perspective, you should look for some general trends and how to improve performance or bottlenecks, but probably not going for individuals. So I, I would like to know your opinion about this. Uh, you, you mean Thank not you. track individuals, but also Try to. I mean, tracking individuals, the problem is that uh, if you say this is the metric we are using, mm -hmm. you can be better than others if you keep adding commits or smaller commits, you know. Mm -hmm. So, how to fix this? Um, that's a really good question, and to be honest, I don't think we have the answer for it. Um, this is a discussion that, that pops up every now and then. Um, I think it was a half year ago when I when I read a quite long mail thread about it, and I think it was about code reviews, uh, particularly. And uh, personally, my view is more on uh, on this that that it would be better to let's say provide some some education along with the metrics, because I I really don't think that that you can. Um, correlate uh, these metrics and, and, and uh, do anything with them so that people will never ever do these uh, games with it uh, or, or, or they, they just don't, don't try to, to game it. But if, uh, if we can provide, let's say, examples that, that in what way it is really uh, useful and, um, and also kind of let them know that um, that we we kind of we, we try to follow these numbers and and we try to uh, reach out to people. Uh, I mean, on on community uh, level and community wide, not not really directly as, as as the foundation, but we are reaching out to to people um, who are doing these patterns and who are who are following these patterns. And I think it's it's kind of better to provide the information before rather than go after them and, and talk to them that, that for whatever reason they are doing what they are doing, it is wrong and it is recognized by, by the individuals in the community and it has a negative uh, response on it. Um, so beyond that, um, I, I don't really know how, how to fix this, uh, but it is definitely an, an, an interesting thing. So kind of partially the, the reasoning behind this talk is, is also to, to share information uh, and try to spread the word and, and give people ideas that, that, that if they put effort into uh, using these numbers the right way, then they can be way more successful in the community than if they just really try to compete by uh, number by number. Thanks. Any further questions? Hi, uh, I, I work on a um, like a community team 
and we have goals to be like number X in commit and number Y in reviews and such like that. And this encourages poor behavior like quantity over quality, as you mentioned before. And uh, we see things as like drive-by reviews, drive-by commits, and even like co-authorship. Um, what kind of uh, what kind of goals would you recommend for for a team instead of those? Um, I would rather say that um, just to so um, the number of commits um, is is at least something that that get merged. So uh, if you're using the number of commits. Um, then um, that activity is still something that was useful uh, for the community. But for example, if you're doing this with, with reviews or, or, uh, or patch sets, because we, we, even, we are even tracking those, so how many versions of, of a patch uh, you're uploading, um, that can really easily end up in, in behaviors like uh, you're just rebasing uh, everything in every second day. Uh, because that will just uh, improve uh, or well, uh, increase <laughs> these numbers. Um, what uh, we um, used to use when um, when I was part of a, a team, uh, a team of contributors, uh, we I think we multiplied the number of. Um, Person day effort, uh, the person day effort number, uh, the number of uh, negative reviews, uh, and the commits, and we we checked this overall number, and uh, it was kind of um, uh, a feedback for us uh, that how we are operating, and uh, for example, uh, if if you don't do reviews and and you you don't you don't try to really uh, thoroughly go through a patch and, and and see whether it is good or not if you never ever had a comment to any patch then there's something wrong so when that number is zero then your overall number will be zero so n you can have let's say 2000 comments but your overall number will still be zero so that's kind of a feedback uh, that what you're doing is, is not the best uh, community citizenship behavior that you can do. And it's kind of true for, uh, for the commits as well. Um, because you, you might be really successful with reviewing, which is really uh, important. Um, but also, if you're uh, a, a develop, part of a development team, then, uh, then your goal is also to, to get your um, code changes, let it be a bug fix or, or a feature, uh, part of a feature uh, into the code base. So, so something else I pay attention to in uh, metrics is uh, disagreements in reviews. Mm -hmm. um, would you consider using those as part of your goals? Because do, um, do, you, do you know what like disagreements are in terms of Stackalytics? It's when a yeah. core contributor will but minus one after you plus one, or vice versa. Uh, yep. So um, I I wouldn't recommend to to put there a minus one just because you want to get that number up. But uh, if you have uh, disagreements, I, I, I usually consider that as a, as a positive sign in the sense of uh, no matter who plus two or uh, plus one a patch, uh, you, you went through it. And, uh, and if you found, found even, even the, the smallest thing that, that does not look okay, uh, then you still uh, put a minus one on it. So in general, um, having that number uh, larger than zero is definitely positive. But uh, if it grows too rapidly, then I think it should be an indication that, that you might not uh, just uh, kind of disagreed by, uh, by um, uh, for a reason, but just to uh, get that number up. So kind of game the system again. Uh, I, th I think it's the other way. Like when you minus one and a core says, actually, this is good, we can merge that. 
I think in both ways. But anyway, uh, our time is four minutes. <laughs> we are four minutes over. So thank you everyone for, for attending um, and happy participation and summit.